practice of the meditation that we have been doing continuously, yeah, uh, continuing from uh, previous practices, we have to understand uh, that um, if we haven't developed the previous um, stages, then it will be difficult to um, develop. Uh, or understand uh, further on from now on uh, especially now the section that we are working on is on the feeling the Vedana yeah. and Vedana is so important part of our life yeah. and we all look for it and we all in our life actually doing everything to gain the pleasant feelings, yeah? nice feelings. Even like a coming to the meditation, and that's also, we are expecting some uh, calmness and some uh, relaxation, uh, uh, some empty mind. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, let's say in a world the affairs uh, we go to work uh, simply to gain some uh, money so that you can have a pleasant life. Uh, so you can have a pleasant life, a uh, com comfortable life. So you're always uh, dealing with this pleasant feeling and as a result, whenever we con when con come across with the unpleasant feelings, then uh, they are more tends to create the resistance, uh, uh, resentments, and uh, um, try to escape from it. So, um, whatever we are experiencing and now is actually, um, we cannot avoid uh, in our life that we are um, is actually based on what we experience, the feeling. Yeah? So that's why it's called Vedana Sammo Sarana. Yeah? Everything is um, based on the feelings. And that this feeling again, that's why we escape from doing certain things to gain certain things. And whatever things that gives us a pleasant feeling or feel that I am having this or that and I feel happy or make me, make me feel happy and we tend to go and do it. And this is again uh, under the impression of this uh, uh, hindrances. Yeah? Um, and in the meantime, whenever things uh, that uh, gives us unpleasant sensations or unpleasant experiences, then we tend to avoid them, we give up. So that's why uh, we have a very extremists or extreme practices going on, uh, going towards one uh, practice or another, uh, simply to satisfy our uh, perceptions, our feelings, our perceptions, or experiencing as we want to experience. Uh, so sometimes uh, as a result of that, we want to practice meditation simply to gain uh, the, um, some form of a, a blissfulness but also meantime we do not want to uh, give up some um, attachments or a pleasant uh, comfortable uh, habits that we normally have in our day-to-day -day life and that again actually leading us to understand that, that uh, our life is shaped by these feelings. Yeah? Our life is shaped by these feelings. And under that feeling, if we do not understand these feelings, what happens is that our consciousness often driven by those feelings. Yeah? Driven by those feelings. So basically, feeling is controlling us to do things as it pleases. So sometimes in a short form it is known as we are a slave of our own feelings. Yeah. 
how do we become slave of our own feelings? And that's simpler because this feeling becomes so dominant and we do not understand this feeling and we attach to that. We proliferate it and that's how it shapes. And actually that is the reason why we become very addicted to certain things. Whether that addiction to the cigarettes, alcohol, nowadays the social media or mobile phones, or even going to the pub, uh, or a dance, you know, like that. And uh, now we can see uh, that uh, whenever there is a parties, then you know, there is always ways to make the time to be in that party time. And that's simply, that's a, driven by this, uh, um, this feeling that we had experienced in the past. And as a result of that, we become a slave to it. And so that's why these feelings actually shaping our life and how we want it to be. And this shape, again, simply because uh, our experiences that we have experienced in the past and that gives us a pleasant. Uh, and that's why it is sanya, vedana, right? And then uh, this uh, consciousness, this, um, uh, this inyan or the the one mind arises. Now, that's simply because of not knowing. Yeah? On, so the, the word the Buddha used uh, is called unwise. Yeah? Unwise person. A sutta word. Right? Unwise person uh, haven't come across with the noble ones and the noble teachings uh, then normally become a slave of whatever they experience. Whereas a person who has come across with the teachings or come across with the noble friends and have understood certain degrees and then rather than letting this uh, feeling to take control what are we doing is that we are learning it yeah? sometimes um, known as killing this feeling uh, so if we can't kill it and then at least take a control of it. Yeah? Uh, so there's a process. <clears throat> kill. If you can't kill, control. Yeah. So if you can control, then killing is basically abandon. And now the current term comes abandonment, sometimes also known as the, um, the deliverance. Yeah? The deliverance is basically uh, the level of the uh, understanding that when these things arises, then simply uh, knowing it and then drops there. Yeah? So that is uh, what uh, I also mentioned a couple of times in the past that um, uh, seeing as is the seeing, hearing as is the hearing. Right? So that is the state you'll come. And that state is basically having this uh, sati or mindfulness so strong. Uh, each moment when it arises and we are able to recognize that uh, and that recognition actually refines this mind so that's why the refining the, uh, the the way to refine the mind is basically understanding this feelings mm -hmm. yeah, understanding this feeling that's why in the practice of a meditation when we uh, attain a certain um, so the joys uh, or the rapture, this rapture can be uh, <laughs> obstacles for us uh, because we attach to it. Uh, we attach to this uh, rapture, uh, the joyness. And actually, rapture itself uh, uh, trembles the mind. Uh, whereas the sukha, which is uh, very different, uh, sukha is something that, uh, that doesn't tremble the mind. Uh, it simply settles the mind. And a mind becomes a very one-pointed, one-pointedness. And that one-pointedness, actually, there is no bodily formation. There is no uh, verbal formation at all. There is just the, the quietness of the mind, which hasn't, uh, which has uh, actually come out from this concept of these feelings and the perceptions. There is pure understanding. And that's pure, that... The moment of this arising of this pure, uh, pure, pure uh, understanding, that 
actually the purified mind. So that's why in the practice of Anapana Sati, what we are doing is the moment when we understand this piti and the sukha, the, or the rapture and this happiness, actually we have experienced this mind. Yeah? Have you noticed that? So we have experienced this mind in a stage that how this mind conditions, condition to start or condition to arise. So that's why it is also known as a Vedana or the feeling is the conditioner to arise the mind. Mm -hmm. yeah? So here you see now how this connect, connects. Yeah? So if we understand this feeling, this, uh, um, this piti and a sukha, and then when we fully understood it as it is, basically what is happening is that there is no perception coming in. But we have fully understood this feeling. And as a result of it, that mind simply settles. And that is actually known as the concentration. Yeah, in a higher state, the higher concentration there. That's called the samadhi. Okay? Uh, this samadhi is different than the samatha, remember. Okay? Although seems like you know, sounds quite uh, uh, similar, but this samadhi is very different than the samatha. Okay. So this samadhi actually is the state that mind is stilled. Okay. Mind is so still at that time that there is no feelings. Okay. There is no feelings and then there, there is no such a concept of perceptions. Okay. So in this moment what happens is that there is no color, there is no shapes. Yeah? There is no color, there is no shapes. So that's why, in, a, in a, whatever you've been practicing, you should be able to recognize that how am I observing these feelings <clears throat> and how I, am I understood each feelings uh, relating to the, each objects or each phenomena that occurs. Now with that understanding, <coughs> basically, <coughs> This, uh, um, the mind actually, rather than arising, it settles. Right? So that's why it's called calming the mind. Okay? In order to attain that one, that's why uh, what is uh, uh, said, uh, what we have to practice actually, or understand it, is the, all the, um, so the eight jnanas, right? So the eight knowledge of the first uh, section, uh, for the first chetra, and then the sixth knowledge of the second chetra. When we understand these both chetras in this section, uh, this way, then the calming of the mind automatically happens. Okay? And that is the moment that your mind body so settled, you do not have any feelings of your body at all. And the mind also simply resting there, okay? so calm rest. So that's why sometimes you know, people ask about the pain, what happens with your pain in the physical world. Actually, as you develop your samadhi, the physical pain simply disappears. The, the body doesn't get there at all. There is no perceptions at all. There is no feelings at all. And in this case, when the mind... Um, comes to this uh, sort of stage of a calmness, actually what happens is that even you will have this moment of no breath, no sati as well. Have you ever experienced that? Even like a no sati. It sounds crazy, isn't it? But you will come into it. It's like a, uh, the, another, the, the simile that I normally think in that stage of a uh, Attainment is like um, uh, the, in, in a science experiment, you suck out the whole uh, uh, air and then you put something in. Right? When you do not have any air in, what happens? The object, uh, even like let's say feather, will it fall or will it rise? Yeah? It won't have any reaction to this feather at all. So that stage of mind is there. 
and so still. So there is no feeling, no perception, and also even like a sati becomes no sati there. Just stillness there. And that's why in Anapana Sati, this breathing meditation is given. Awareness of the breath is given as in the background. In case you experience it, okay, return. So that the moment when you observe the breath, then again, one chitta comes, one consciousness arises. Okay? So that's why understanding this one chitta, actually developing a wisdom. The one wisdom. Pante. Okay? So that's why the Buddha's uh, teaching is actually clearly saying that wisdom has to be developed. In order to develop this wisdom, so we have to understand this consciousness. Okay? True consciousness. And this, in order to understand this true consciousness, then we have to understand the feeling. So, well, when we understand this feeling, actually we are in the present moment. So we are basically having a sampajanya all the time. Wisdom part all the time. So with that wisdom, what happens? Whenever this mind, because we haven't left the breath, because we're coming back to the present moment, the breath is there, that moment what happens that Whenever we experience this mental state, the mind arises, the consciousness, in that moment, then we will be able to recognize whether this mind is polluted by something or not. So the kilesas, right? Raga, dvesa, moha, yeah? like that. So there are eight, uh, 16, 16 types of uh, uh, mind, mind state. Yeah? So we will be able to recognize that. In, in a short form, let's say, a raga, right? Lust. We will be able to recognize that, okay, whether my mind is um, polluted or with the this lustful or lustful mind. So we are able to recognize. And these recognition of each and every stages actually helping us to understand that this mind itself in a reality conditioned by this feeling and perception created. And when this happens, what happens? We have this perception of a desire, want to have pleasant sensation or want to gain some form of a pleasant experiences, whether it's in this world or whether hereafter. Okay? So that's why the, this moment of uh, practice is actually really important. And uh, this you can check yourself uh, that uh, whether your practice is improving or not in a four ways. Number one, checking your uh, faith, sadda, checking your faith, that how much faith you have developed towards the Buddha, towards the Dhamma, towards the Sangha. Okay? So the moment when you see the Buddha, how much genuine uh, a gratitude and a respect arises in yourself. Yeah? And then the Dharma, Dharma, how much um, the genuine respect and a gratitude do you have? And that again, you can check from even your, you know, uh, if you're doing chantings, you can check from there too, whether you are just reciting it or you are contemplating and practicing it. And even in, in the Sangha again, whenever you see the Sangha, is it coming from your heart to pay respect? Uh, pure gratitude, whether it is coming or not. So early on, I was explaining about gaining faith in your practice. And now this is coming towards the objectives. Yeah? Objects that we are having. So you, you can check that one. Okay? And then the second is that... Uh, uh, how much you are conscious about your own moral practices. This again I mentioned last week as well. So this conscious awareness and uh, thinking of practicing it. And the third one is giving. When you are giving, so are you giving from your heart or are you are just giving it 
simply to fulfill her duties. Yeah? And this giving again relates further, relates further into the emotions. Yeah? It also relates further into uh, so-called abhayada, yeah? the giving forgiveness and forgetting. The most important is the forgetting. So that also uh, needs to uh, check on yourself as well, whether have you developed that or not. And the last one is basically uh, the development of the wisdom, which again, obviously, you know, in order to develop this wisdom, we have to understand the mind. So that's why these four things you can check uh, in your own daily practices and see that whether how, you know, how much you have developed these qualities in yourself, like you know, paying respect or having a gratitude to the Buddha and the Sangha, and a sila and giving madana, you know, and then the wisdom. Yeah. So I've spoken quite long today, so I think it's enough for now. Uh, let's practice meditation and later we can discuss on further. Spend some time collecting yourself to the here and now and spend a few moments settling down, grounding yourself, by observing the breath, incoming breath, outgoing breath. A long breath, short breath, and different breaths relating to the body calming the body, calming of it. And you have an experience of uh, some blissful moments of piti, the rapture and of sukha, the happiness. And after that, try to or train yourself to learn to notice this each mind that you are having. Each breath that you recognize, that's each mind is there. There is a feeling, there is a perception of this is the breath. There is awareness, conscious awareness of it. So tonight's practice, trying to notice three things, feeling, perception, and consciousness. Consciousness as an awareness, a feeling as things uh, that you observe, and a recognition of it.
But obviously, if you can't uh, recognize these these three things in working with the breath, then gradually improving your concentration and gradually try to recognize these phenomena. experience of this uh, sukha is mental happiness. Well, you have experienced it. It's like having a bath after a long walk. It's not about thinking of having a bath, but you have taken a bath. And that satisfaction, that contentment, when there is that contentment, rather than developing the desire to be in that contentment, but recognizing that state and ability to let it be, keeping the mind in a very equanimous stillness. trying to recognize this moment of the consciousness as like a bouncing back, it's like a flame just appears. So continue practicing for some time.
I did actually bring my copy with me. <laughs> <laughs> but this is new one. This is new one. Oh, it's a new one. It's in one piece. Oh, no. I think mine's from one piece. Oh, right, okay. I've got two left. <laughs> no excuse. <coughs> you need one here? So before we read uh, and discuss on a further uh, topic, a further section, anybody has anything to ask on the practice or anything you want to share? Yeah? Yes. Um. Probably about four weeks ago when we brought Donna. Yeah. Ada and I we we had a discussion with you about um whether the teaching on attachment extends to attachment to the Buddhist teaching mm -hmm. and practices. Um, if I remember rightly, to the exclusion of anything else. And um, we had a sort of, as I recall, quite humorous conversation about that. Mm. I just wondered if you'd say something. Um, about that that was helpful and not humorous. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've thought about this because um, uh, watching the disturbances in the American universities, where on the one side you've got extreme attachment to the Palestinian cause, and on the other hand, you've got extreme attachment to the Israeli cause, uh, or the Jewish cause, mm -hmm. and that results in violence and distress. Can we leave that for other time? Uh, if you wish. Uh, for other sessions. Yes. I want to concentrate this. On okay. Anapana Sati. More. Sorry, I thought you were inviting any questions. <laughs> I'm trying to not to deviate uh, <laughs> in, in a couple of days now, uh, a couple of sessions. Okay. I want to um, finish at least of this uh, second trade trials for this coming our retreat. Okay. Okay. Um, although it does have something to do with the attachment. And it's uh, it coming in this uh, Chitta Sankhara, <coughs> the mental formation. Mm -hmm. you know, it has something to do with the uh, attachments. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, this uh, sut the discourse I gave last week to read, uh, the Chula Vyadala Sutta, which is translated as a um, shorter uh, setup of questions and answers. And this is also sometimes translated as elaboration. Mm -hmm. okay. Elaboration on a certain very specific topics. And that uh, uh, this discourse actually uh, again uh, starts off with the identity. And this identity is simply created because of the attachment. Okay. Because of the attachment to the self. Yeah, and this attachment to the self uh, starts from attachment to the uh, body, feeling, perception, yeah, formation, and consciousness. When someone attached to that, either of one of these five, then basically um, create the identity. Yeah? And then a person who knows that these five aggregates are, in fact, is not me and mine. Yeah? 
this is not me and mine. Then this wise person, what happens that he will understand the uh, the four the four noble truths. Right? When somebody no, uh, understood in that way, what happens is that um, there will be no conflicts. Yeah? And in relation to that, again, uh, further, in order to understand further more detail, how one can develop to be a wise one. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And there are another two discourses come. And if you're interested, uh, if I remember correctly, then that's, I think, 47 and 49. Uh, 47, 46 and 47, I think. Mm -hmm. That actually the, uh, um, that teaches how to develop uh, wiseness. <laughs> okay? And that wiseness is basically to understand that not having any attachment to this five aggregates. Uh -huh. like that. And the moment when we don't have that, then there is no identity. When there is no identity, then you're not creating any uh, conflicts with anyone. You will be accepting everybody in the same state of we are all. And this again uh, from the, uh, the, the fourth one from the second tetra, and uh, now let's say third one in the second tetra, <coughs> actually, uh, is uh, talking about uh, understa understanding the true self. Uh, and that's why mo mo moment when we attain uh, this mind into that state of equanimity as well as the samadhi, the contemplation, contemplated states of the mind, that time we able to understand this five aggregate in the one way only. That's a consciousness, not the rupa, yeah? not the body, not the feeling, not the perception, and there is no formation. There's only knower, the mind, mental state. <coughs> okay? So here, from there, that state uh, actually um, seeing everything in a uh, in that state. So that's why if you remember uh, in the past I used to say that if you want to know the development of your meditation, check the four Brahma Viharas. Mm. Yeah? Kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy and equanimity. That comes because you have seen your own mind, yeah? your state of the mind. Mm. So that you are relating and now here. This is the relationship now. From that state, you will be able to expand in your understanding into that uh, everything is just like open. You know, everything is just like related. We are all one, not anybody else, not differentiating one another. It's just become a one. And then uh, from that state, uh, again, when you contemplate further on to that having this openness or everything is just the oneness and there is again another state comes just the knower again the refined mental state huh? refined mental state so that's actually it comes later on uh, in the we can discuss that further on <coughs> on that as well so that's why uh, the, uh, although it's related to what you uh, asked, uh, asked uh, on that, but I do not want to go in that way, but try to come to this uh, uh, Anapana Sati. <coughs> Anapana Sati, uh, this way. Uh, so, so that's why uh, let us uh, try to relate on that. Okay. Any other things on this? Right, so if not, then let's uh, do the chanting first, simply to uh, get used to with it and um, <coughs> try to make sense of it later on. It's easier to comprehend. Mm -hmm.
idam bhikkhu aranyaka tova rukha mulaka tova sunyakara ka tova nisita jipalankam apujitava uchumkayang panidhaya parimukhang sating padhapetava so satova atsa sati satova patsa sati Jikhan Vahatsa Santo, Jikhan Vahatsa Sami Te Pajanati, Jikhan Vahatsa Santo, Jikhan Vahatsa Sami Te Pajanati, Rasan Vahatsa Santo, Rasan Vahatsa Sami Te Pajanati, Rasan Vahatsa Santo, Rasan Vahatsa Sami Te Pajanati, Sapakaya pati sanvedhi, asa se sami ti sikhati. Sapakaya pati sanvedhi, asa se sami ti sikhati. Pasan bhayang kaya sangharan, asa se sami ti sikhati. Pasan bhayang kaya sangharan, asa se sami ti sikhati. Piti pati sanvedhi. Asa se sami te sikhati, piti pari sang vedhi, vasa se sami te sikhati, sukha pati sang vedhi, asa se sami te sikhati, sukha pati sang vedhi, vasa se sami te sikhati, chitta sang khara pati sang vedhi, asa se sami te sikhati, Chitta Sankhara Pati Sanvedhi, Pasa Se Sami Ti Sikhati, Pasang Hayang Chitta Sankhara, Asa Se Sami Ti Sikhati, Pasang Hayang Chitta Sankhara, Pasa Se Sami Ti Sikhati, Chitta Pati Sanvedhi, Asa Se Sami Ti Sikhati, Chitta Pati Sanvedhi, Pasa se sami te sikhati, Abhi pamodhayam chittam, Asa se sami te sikhati, Abhi pamodhayam chittam, Pasa se sami te sikhati, Samadaham chittam, Asa se sami te sikhati, Samadaham chittam, Pasa se sami te sikhati, Vimochayam chittam, Asa se sami te sikhati, Vimocha yam chetan, Pasa se sami te sikhati, Ani chanu pasi, Asa se sami te sikhati, Ani chanu pasi, Pasa se sami te sikhati, Viragha nu pasi, Asa se sami te sikhati, Viragha nu pasi, Pasa se sami te sikhati, Nirodhanu pasi, asa se sami te sikhati. Nirodhanu pasi, pasa se sami te sikhati. Padini sakhanu pasi, asa se sami te sikhati. Padini sakhanu pasi, pasa se sami te sikhati. So within this um, Anapana study, we have um, been working at the moment on the second tetra, which is the contemplation of a feeling. On that, we have uh, gone through the um, rapture of the Piti Padisangweti. So that's uh, basically <coughs> ability to experience the Piti, the rapture and also um, experience of the pleasure or the happiness. And this happiness is not about the bodily happiness, but the mental contentment or con my mental happiness or pleasure born from uh, the mental um, satisfaction. Now, when we understand these two, uh, rapture and uh, this uh, uh, sukha or the uh, happiness, in fact, at that moment, we will be able to see the mental creation or the, that conditioning the mind to arise. 
that we discussed on that. So in relation to that, um, I wanted to uh, read this uh, another discourse which I uh, mentioned last week. Um, and uh, so, um, in simply to understand uh, the feeling and the perception and how this mind arises so that it's uh, easier to uh, understand or gaining a further uh, development of the equanimous mind, uh, equanimity, and then able to let it be. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, I believe Tussara have read, and uh, did you want to share something? Or oh, before that, actually, Winnie asked uh, on the Vedana for a long time, yeah, a long time ago, and I stopped uh, not answering that uh, on a Vedana at that time, uh, uh, simply to wait uh, until this moment. Now, during this uh, sessions and the uh, that we have been discussing, uh, Vini, do you have any thoughts on that, or you want to uh, add or share your thoughts, or you have you understood so far? You, we've been discussing on this session. I can't remember the question. <laughs> That's why I asked the question. I thought it was going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> so your question was how Vedana arises and how can the Vedana be stopped and is it possible to stop the Vedana so that was your question that were your question yeah? okay what are the que answers now <laughs> you can't stop the Vedana but you can stop after that like <coughs> your perception on it so, the Sarah is saying, you can't stop the Vedana. Yeah, yeah. it's like uh, when the Chakulunya and the, mm -hmm. the like, Pinam Paso, you know, the, and the discussion, and after that, there's a build up after that. Mm. Right? Huh, Vini? It arises. I see three, three things coming to meet in one place or three months and get to Passo. Passo starts, so then we're going to arise it. There's no way to stop it. Okay. So, in that case, um, I want you to go back and read this sutta again. Chulavedala Sutta, <laughs> so you will realize. Okay. Uh, however, I will go straight to Vedana, a feeling. Okay. <laughs> okay. On the second, the third page of this uh, that uh, uh, Tusara uh, printed out. Okay. So not not on third page. Sorry, I have to go further on. Uh -huh. So, so uh, here it says, now lady, what are fabrications? Okay, so this is on the fourth page, uh, in the middle of the fourth page of this one. Okay? So here, uh, Visakha asks Dhammajidna, saying, what are fabrications? Or basically, formation uh, or uh, conditioners. Okay? So, uh, Sankha. Okay? Mm -hmm. And here says, these three fabrications, friend, Visa, friend Visaka, bodily fabrications, verbal fabrication, and mental fabrication. Then further on it says, but what are bodily formations? What are verbal formations? What are mental formations? 
And then uh, Dhammadina answers saying, now remember, the bodily formation we have discussed in the first tetra. Okay? And then this uh, verbal formation or fabrication, we did not touch that because we understood it along the way that we were practicing. But here in this discourse, Dhammadina explains what are they. And now you, when you read it, then you read, ah, that is. Okay? So, it says, in and out breath are bodily fabrication. Okay? Directed thought and evaluation are a verbal fabrication. Vitakta vichara is verbal fabrication. Okay? And then perception and feelings are mental formation. Okay? So remember, perception and feeling are mental formation. So further, Visaka asks, but why are in, in and out breaths bodily fabrication? Why are directed thought and evaluation verbal fabrications? Why are perception and feelings a mental fabrication? Okay? So Sankara, this is in a functional way, and this is related to, and this you can relate to the dependent origination. Okay? So here, basically talking about bodily formation, verbal formation, and mental formation. Okay? <coughs> <clears throat> Dhammadina further explains, saying, In and out breaths are bodily, these are things tied up with the body. So, this is body in the body now. Yeah? One part of the body in the entire body. So, that's why it is bodily formation, and which we discussed, if I remember correctly, four weeks on that. Okay? Four weeks on that. And that's why in and out breaths are bodily formation. Having first, now here, the verbal, uh, ver uh, verbal formation, having first directed one's thoughts and made an evaluation of that thought, one takes, breaks out into speech. Okay. Uh, so you have to think about something and then you are evaluating. Yeah? Only then you will speak. Otherwise, you can't speak. So that's why this initial stage, which, uh, which sometimes may find very awkward, if you are still thinking how you, how you call it a verbal formation. So that's the initial stage of how the words formed. Okay. So that's why it is known as the conditioner to form the verbal uh, formation. Okay? So that's why this thoughts and evaluation are the verbal formation. Okay? And that's why directed thought and evaluation are verbal for fabrications. Perception and feelings are mental. These are things tied up with the mind. Okay, with the mind. That's why perception and feelings are mental fabrication. Okay? And now further on, so, okay, Visa asks, Now lady, how does the attainment of the cessation of a perception and a feeling comes about? Okay? So cessation of perception and feeling comes about. <laughs> so when you attain the fourth jhana, oh, I see. that moment there is no feeling, oh, okay. there is no perception. Oh, okay. See? <laughs> so here now again, here this Dhammadina answers. Listen carefully, okay? <clears throat> The thought does not occur to a monk as he is attaining the cessation of a perception and a feeling that I am about to attain the cessation of a perception and a feeling or that I am attaining 
the cessation of a perception and a feeling, or that I have attained the cessation of a perception and feelings. Mm -hmm. See? Instead, so she further said, instead, the way his mind has previously been developed leads him to that state. Mm -hmm. yeah? Previously developed, that leads to in that state of cessation of perception and feeling. The reconditioning. Mm. Is that what it means? Not reconditioning, it's a settling. <clears throat> yeah. So it's like that. Um, there is an, uh, that's why uh, you have to understand the PT and a sukha. Yeah? So you experience the rapture, and then uh, so the uh, analogy would be you were very thirsty, and you drunk the water, you drunk. And then you feel so satisfied. When you are satisfied, there is no, nothing else to think of now. So mind is completely settled. And that state is called the Samadhi, right? Concentration. And this state now, what you are going to develop is the equanimity. So that's why the fourth jhana comes in. Equanimity and ekakata. Right? So that state, basically, you have developed. Mm. Right? And that, that state, it doesn't have feeling. It doesn't have perceptions. And that's why in that stage, sometimes it is also known as there is no sati or mindfulness, awareness. It's just stillness. It just stops. Is that not the same as... Um, developing the conditions for that to happen through the practice. We, we worked, we worked on that, like mm -hmm. uh, on, like uh, paying attention to the breath, mm -hmm. and then uh, as our mind settled slowly, mm -hmm. and then with that settlement, we experience the PT and then the sukha. Mm -hmm. So because of these, we are attaining this state. Right? No, uh, yeah? so that's, that's why yeah. that's why Dhamma Dina is saying here that I am about to attain, right? I'm about to attain the cessation of a perception. So you cannot, if your condition is not ripened yet. Right? The conditions have to exist for that to happen. It's like uh, uh, you, in order to go to the Abedin city, you have to have some form of uh, uh, traveling vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you are having those vehicles, and after you have gone on it, Eventually, you arrive like that. Okay, so that's like a PT and a sukha is like a, a one vehicle, uh, and you're taking, and then you arrive there. Okay, so that's what this is there. Okay, and further on, uh, she mentioned further on, but when. A monk is attaining the cessation of a perception and a feeling. Cessation, yeah? So it can be no feeling. <laughs> okay? It can be end. So cessation of a feelings and perception, which things ceases first. Sorry, now this is again, uh, Visaki is asking. Mm. Which one ceases first? Okay. First, a bodily fabrication of verbal fabrication or mental fabrication. Now, what do you think? What should go first? Body, verbal, and mental. Okay. Hmm? So, yeah. Now, Dhammajina, sorry? That's me. <laughs> huh? David want to say something? No, it's okay. Mm. So, this is very interesting approach actually, which normally we do not think. We will be thinking that when we are doing something, first we think, right? And then we do. And here, 
quite in strange uh, that first the verbal speech tranquilized, verbal fabrication will cease. Okay. So here, let let me read. When a monk is attaining the cessation of a perception and a feeling, a verbal fabrication ceases first. Okay. Then bodily fabrication, then mental fabrication. Okay. So that's why here we have to remember vitakka vichara. Okay, initial thought and evaluation. So these are the two factors which is known as verbal fabrication that creates the speech. When we are meditating, so this moment, our thinking, so we have left the breath now. Suppose we are using the breath. Okay? We are not worried about the breath, which I mentioned last week. We are not concerned of the breath. We have left the breath. Breath is no more existent there. Uh, completely gone. Okay? So that is verbally we are free from that. So that's how we have attained the first jhana. Okay? And then with that attainment, then um, the second is the bodily fabrication ceases. And then that eventually comes to the uh, uh, mental state. So bodily now it's like you are uh, still working with it, still there, presence, the breath is still present there. You're thinking, that's why there is a feeling and a perception, and an engagement is there going on. Yeah? And then once that finishes, then comes to the mind. So that's why we have come to the stage of the mind, right? mental fabrication. Now again, let's go to this uh, sutta again. Now, lady, how does emergence from the cessation of a perception and feeling comes about? Okay. The thought does not occur to a monk as he is emerging from the cessation of a perception and a feeling that I am about to emerge from the cessation of perception and a feeling or that I am emerging from the cessation of a perception and feelings of, or that I have emerged from the cessation of uh, perception and feeling. Instead, the way, this, uh, the way his mind has previously been developed leads him to that state. Okay? And further it says, but when a monk is emerging from the cessation of a perception and a feeling, which, thing, which things arise first? Bodily fabrication, verbal fabrication, or a mental fabrication. And then the Medina answers, <clears throat> When a monk is emerging from the cessation of a perception and a feeling, mental fabrications arise first. Okay? And then a bodily fabrications arise, and then verbal fabrication arise. Basically, it's come out of John. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, a simile you can think of is, suppose you, you've been waking up, let's say, 6 o'clock in the morning, right? Yeah. Every day. And initially, you will set up a clock. Uh, I will wake up 6 o'clock, right? So, you will be in a deep sleep, and then when clock uh, uh, rings, and you wake up. And it goes on and you're repeatedly doing again and again and again and again. It comes to the stage that you set the, the alarm, but you don't have to wait for that alarm. You wake up automatically. And you can't uh, you know, uh, prove or you can't uh, uh, analyze why. It just happens, right? And that's the same stage of the <clears throat> this jhana that in the state, initial stage, it will be like that. You can stay as long as you wish. And then uh, it just come out from it. And in the meantime, you can go back again. Mm -hmm. So that's why in a practice of the jhanas, 
if I remember correctly, there are four, four or five ways of practicing. Yeah? There is no confusion of with that. You can go back and then come up again. Uh, but you do not know. You do not fix it. That, okay, this is, this is. Yeah? When it's like a, you've been practicing in that way, like a six o'clock. So it just turns up at six o'clock like that. Okay? So that's the jhana. Uh, and that's, that's coming out from the jhana. Okay? And when you come out from the jhana, so when you go into the jhana, vitaka vichara, your thought process, your thinking of the objects is gone to begin with. Whereas you're coming out from the jhana, so first, the mind has to awaken up. Yeah? So mind has to wake up in order to get the other thinking to process. Yeah. So man, when the mind wakes up, then again, in order to think about, or in order to speak about, so leave some form of objects to be. Yeah? So that's why here, when you come out, mental, verbal, sorry, mental, physical, and then verbal. Okay? Formation that arises. Okay? Now further on, when a monk has emerged from the cessation of perception and a feeling, uh, how many contacts make contact? <laughs> so when you wake up, how many contacts do you think you can think of? So that's how the feeling comes now. Yeah? How many contacts comes? Hmm? At once, so it just... It just comes, okay? So now let me go to yeah. this one. When a monk has emerged from the cessation of a perception and a feeling, three contacts make contact. Contact with emptiness, contact with the signless, and contact with undirected. Do you know what these means? No. no. <laughs> <coughs> now, this is not talking about coming back to the worldly affairs now, worldly life. It is talking about the higher jhanas. Uh, after four jhanas, what are the other four jhanas? Remember? Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So that's going into that stage. <coughs> but however, when we look at you know, it, when we uh, explain in our um, terms our terms, <clears throat> emptiness is, it's like when you wake up and you don't have any thinking at all. It's just empty of any objects or empty of anything. So that is emptiness. Is, is that the same as another term, non-self? It's not about non-self yet. Uh, there is a still a self, self there. So that's why there is an emptiness. You're experiencing the empty, empty mind, you know, in a way. Yeah? Yeah. Empty mind. Uh, and this empty mind, uh, men, empty mind or e existence of the uh, experience of this empty mind is the moment that um, when we wake mm -hmm. up and suppose you're on holiday. And then you don't have to worry about the work. You don't have to worry about <coughs> cooking. You don't have to worry about anybody. Mm -hmm. okay? And at that time, your mind is so fresh and so still. And nothing to worry, nowhere to go. Uh, that state of the mind. So this you can observe in your daily life as well. When you wake up in the morning, try to observe. Uh, try to observe your mental state. And then you realize 
how empty this is and how things come into mm -hmm. existence. And when this something comes into, then that is the sign. Okay, that's called a nimitta. But this nimitta, although uh, the translation is a sign, but very different sign. Right? It just uh, emerges in our consciousness uh, like a first thought. Okay? It's like a first thought, the sign that rises. And then with that sign, what happens that uh, we will, uh, you know, at that state again, it arises, but we do not know what is it for. And after we have recognized it, so here comes now we recognize the feeling and perception and it comes in and then we direct the, that thought into this or that. So that's why, oh, I need to wake up, wear my clothes or go to the toilet and do things. So we, uh, it's called, we engage into uh, that thought, that sign, mm -hmm. uh, that, in, uh, that undirected sign that arose in the early morning. So that's what, you know, uh, I remember uh, many times, many, many times actually, you know, when, uh, suppose you go, you go to sleep and then you, you go to sleep um, and you're using meditation and you sleep. Sometimes you recognize uh, like a belly folds and you go on sleep and then when you wake up in the morning, what happens is that your mind is so still. Her mind is mind doesn't have anything at that time, and then suddenly some thought, a sort of signs comes, and then your thought you grasp it. At that moment of a grasping that thought, now these thoughts often I have experienced comes to the reality. Mm. Okay, so that uh, that's why whenever I, um, in the morning I suppose I'm going. Um, uh, sleep, going to sleep, and then in a meditation, I got to be very careful when I wake up. Mm -hmm. uh, so because what do you mean going to the reality. Sorry. What do you mean by going to the reality? You wake yeah, up. Feeling or feel like, like coming to true. Oh. Uh, coming to be true, uh, like that. So that's why I got to be very careful of that first stage of the mind. So that's in worldly uh, terms of this experience. Uh, after we come out, we experience these three contacts. Whereas in the jhanic term, then that's going into the further uh, well, four other jhanas going into. And that's again uh, possible of uh, experience in, um, in our worldly term as well. Again, if I give you an example, I, if actually I did mention uh, uh, before we meditate, uh, Forgot to watch the time. Oh. <laughs> okay, I I did mention during our uh, uh, reflection that before meditation, uh, you know, it's an experience of the openness. Uh, everything becomes uh, so wide open, and your your mind simply. Uh, the term I can think of, like in a Pali term, the akasa, it's like a, so uh, empty, or open, and spacious, uh, like that. Uh, and then when you withdraw yourself back and watch that uh, feeling or that uh, experience, then you realize, oh, this is simply because I am aware. That's how the consciousness, vinyana, so you become aware of your own awareness and this awareness is so pure uh, so uh, subtle and uh, it's like a, in a darkness you just uh, manage to have a sparkle a spark of the light mm -hmm. like that which stage that happens? this the, 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 the vinyan and jayatana oh. so oh. that's like in this way. Uh, is, so it, uh, is it uh, after the emptiness? Yes. So it's emptiness is this uh, sunyata dharma. No, you hear here, it's not uh, in, in a practice when uh, um, the sunyata is, in a way, it's uh, 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 called uh, nibbana, one way of nibbana. 
but not complete Nibbana yet. Right? And uh, the Pali term can be uh, like a Kanika Nibbana, a momentary uh, attainment. So that is, so in this, actually in that stage, uh, one can attain this, uh, uh, not can experience this Nibbana. So that's why it's called the deli- that's why here the vimutti, the word vimutti comes. Uh, so the sunyata and uh, this uh, the emptiness is uh, related to in that state here. Yeah? Mm. Anyway, I'm going too far. Okay. Um, okay, let me read further one uh, until. <laughs> I haven't finished the feeling yet. Um, <laughs> it's already nine o'clock. Uh, but okay, I will read just another. Okay, and then further, Visaka says, uh, when a monk has emerged from the cessation of uh, cessation of a perception and a feeling, lady, to what does his mind lean? Okay. So what does his mind lean? So here now, okay, to what does it tend? To what does it incline? Okay, so when you come out from that, where this mind will go? Yeah. And then the uh, Dhammadina says, when a monk has emerged from the cessation of this friend, his mind lean to seclusion. See? Okay, and then tend to seclusion, incline to seclusion, viveka. Yeah. So this viveka uh, again now. Mind has come out from the world of Vyasana. Viveka here is uh, Kilesa. Right? So coming out from that. And then further on, so now Visaka is asking further on, uh, saying, How many kinds of a feeling are there? Mm-hmm. When you are in seclusion, how many kinds of a feelings are there? Okay? And then there are three types. So, pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, and neutral feeling. And then he says, what is a pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, and neutral feeling? So, whatever is experienced physically or mentally as pleasant or gratifying is a pleasant feeling. Okay? And obviously the opposite of it. Okay? And, and then the neutral. And then further on he asks, and, uh, and in what way is a pleasant feeling Pleasant. So he is asking, pleasant feeling. What in what way is pleasant, uh-huh. uh, and what uh, unpleasant? So and she said, pleasant feeling is pleasant in remaining, uh-huh. in remaining, and painful in clinging. Uh-huh. Painful feeling is painful in remaining and pleasant in changing. Neither uh, neutrality in occur- occurring together with knowledge and a painful in occurrence with the knowledge. Okay. What obsession gets obsessed with pleasant feeling okay. uh, and uh, painful feeling and neutral feeling? Passion. Obsession gets obsessed with the pleasant feeling. Resistance. Obsession gets obsessed with the painful feeling and Ignorant, obsessed, gets obsessed with neither pleasant nor painful feeling. So this is basically giving a counterpart, mm-hmm. right? counterpart of that each feeling. Uh, goes on, actually you can go back and read, goes on and on and on. He will ask the counterpart, counterpart, until he goes on to saying, um, what is after Nibbana? Okay. He asked, after Nibbana, what is the counterpart of the Nibbana? And here, when it says, when he asked, what is the after Nibbana? Do you know why he asked that question? And what, do you know what the Dhammadina answers? So, Dhammadina uh, answers in this way. You have gone too far. <laughs> huh? Huh? You have gone too far. You can't keep holding on up to the limit of the question. Okay? For the holy life, holy life gains a footing in unbinding. So that's a nibbana. Right? 
culminates in unbinding, has unbinding as its final end. Okay. Do you know why she answered in that way? Mm -hmm. And further on, she said, if you wish, go to the Blessed One and ask him the meaning of these things. Mm -hmm. Do you know why he and why she told him in this way? That's the point. He was anagami, whereas the the Dhammajinna was an arhat. So in this case, also confirms that when you haven't attained, there will be a countless question, and that cannot be satisfied by answering. Oh. Right? You have to experience it. So that's why Visakha said, you have gone too far. Mm -hmm. Because he hasn't attained it. Mm -hmm. right? So that's why he was just trying to find what after what at what. It's like a, children ask, you know, a child asking someone a question, countless question, mm -hmm. that you, know, you cannot answer and he will not take it mm -hmm. uh, like that. So Dhamma did not answer at the end. And there is nothing beyond the Nibbana. But he asked what after the Nibbana mm -hmm. because he hasn't attained it. Mm -hmm. There is still self that <coughs> exists. Yeah. There is still that self of something left. There is still there. Mm. Right? So, you can go back and read again the uh, complete form of this feeling and of perception. So, the answer is Right, there is you can end the feeling and perception. <laughs> okay, so there is a moment of no feeling and no perceptions. Okay, right, so uh, in that case, actually, we have uh, done this um, third one from the uh, tetra, uh, two second tetra. Okay, so that is he trains himself to breathe in sensitive to mental uh, processes and. Uh, in, uh, to breathe, in, breathe out uh, sensitive to mental processes. Now, further on, if you want to uh, uh, deepen your understanding, uh, so you can go and read the uh, another discourse, 111. Okay. When it says chitta here, is it is it consciousness? Uh, consciousness. One, it's not an entire consciousness, what? but just one consciousness. That's why it's called chitta sankhara. Okay. So that's why, in order to arise one sankhara, what one chitta or one uh, consciousness, you have to have a two factors coming together. That's the feeling and perception. When these two comes, so that moment, then this uh, consciousness arises. So that's why in Abhidhamma, if you look at from Abhidhamma, chitta will never be alone without the chetasita. So always. The one or two, sorry, well, more than one chetasitas needs to be present to have the one chitta to arise. Mm -hmm. So, when is there together here? Is it not? Hmm? Is it together? Yeah, it's together here. Together. That's why, that's why when we are talking about mental fabrication or mental formation or chitta sankhara, mm -hmm. so we have to understand that one chitta sankhara is. The feeling and perception. Mm -hmm. So that's why, in order to understand this one uh, chitta sankhara, we have to understand the pt and the sukha. Yeah? When we understand the pt and the sukha, then chitta sankhara obviously become visible, visible there. Mm -hmm. So if we haven't understood or we haven't experienced this, then still, like, what is this? Mm -hmm. uh, so we still have to go back to the feeling and perception. Whereas when we experience the sukha, that moment, uh, uh, this uh, we see that uh, sukha and uh, exper experiencing this uh, sukha and, uh, and that we perceive it, uh, that actually creating this mind. So that moment, you re you realize the, uh, the arising of this mind. Uh, and when you when you understand this arising of the mind. Then you understand this raga, or this lustful mind, uh, the um, the hatred mind, uh, the moha, the ignorant mind, the steel mind, uh, like that. These 
16 lines. Mm -hmm. You will you recognize from that. Okay? Otherwise, we are just playing. We, uh, we always think that our meditation is when we are attached, uh, when we are having this breath or object of a meditation, we are meditating. In fact, we have to give up that one. The, the, the uh, breath, let's say in, from this one, the breath is just in the background, just helping us. We don't think of that. If you are thinking, it's still Vati Sankhara, right? There's still verbal fabrication. We haven't gone away from that. And when we haven't gone away from it, how can we recognize the mind? When we can't recognize the mind, we haven't understood the Rupa, Nama and Rupa. Mm -hmm. right? We are still bound by this Nama and Rupa. We are still mingling or holding on to this Nama and Rupa. So now, now when we recognize the creation or arising of this uh, consciousness, then what we understand, the whole five aggregates, because we have worked on a, a, a body form materiality yeah? and then now we are working on these four uh, particularly three in fact is uh, where we uh, feeling perception and formation so all these three settles when all these three settles what happens the only consciousness and this consciousness again we able to recognize actually this arises because of these three <laughs> see and that's how we understand the five aggregates and when we understand that one, then we recognize uh, the true reality of our own mindset. And that's how we withdraw ourselves from having any attachments to this five aggregates. What's the particle for perception? Perception, sanya. Yeah. So that's what, in this case, uh, when we understand this chitta sankhara, Actually, this moment, uh, we have understood the five aggregates in its true nature. And that's how we can uh, uh, practice now gradually towards the vipassana from there. Although it's not yet, because now, um, after that, the chitanapasana, the third tretra, is basically familiarizing or studying the nature of the mind. Studying nature of the mind, the character of the mind, and when we understand the character of the mind, now we don't need to worry about <laughs> vipassana. Now we have seen it in true nature, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. So the first tetra, we were looking at the materiality and how material things arises. Yeah? Working on that. And now we're working on a second tretra, basically working in order to know this mind, how this mind creates. And when we, in the third tetra, basically we are working with this mind, understanding the nature, the character, the functionality of it. And then when we understand in its true nature of this mind, what is the true nature? Anicca. Yeah? So it changed. So that's the third, uh, the fourth one, mm. starting from Anicca mm -hmm. yeah. and What is the purpose of practice? Uh, what is the purpose of knowing Sanicca? Yeah. So basically, to feel that this is not me and mine, this passion, Viraga Anupassi. Yeah. What is for that feeling? Nirodha Anupassi. To, you know, to say, uh, this is going to be going away, a cessation of this. Um, and things that is going to you know, end, why should we worry? Patinisaka, give it back to the nature, let it go, let it be. Why worry? See, like that. So that's why the, the sequence is in this way, you know, we are working. But once we have understood all, one understanding comes all. So that's why initial practice is very important. Okay? This, uh, the first tetra and the second tetra is very, very important in order to understand the third and the fourth. Okay? Okay. I think we have uh, done uh, 
I'm going to do 15 minutes more yes. than usual. Okay. Right, now let's uh, uh, practice loving kindness meditation to finish up. Spend some time on the breath and then relax and calm yourself down. And spend some time reflecting on today's session. And practice loving kindness meditation. Go into your mind. Feel the heartbeat, allowing yourself to be happy, at peace, free from suffering. And mentally when you sight. May I be free from suffering, may I be able to maintain my grace, may I be liberated, liberated. And similarly, sharing loving kindness and compassion to all other sentient beings, starting from near to your one, whatever beings there are. May they be well, may they be happy, may they be at peace, may they be free from suffering. May they be able to maintain their happiness. May they be liberated. Attention back to body, feel the sensations in your body. And bring your attention to your eyes. Get an intention to open your eyes and come up from the practice as a here or gone. And reflect for a few moments.
Yeah. <laughs> 